And welcome back. It is um, tonight. We will see what already happened, but through the magics of uh, time delay, we will see this evening the opening ceremonies from Sochi. And we're very pleased to be joined here by Doug Wilson, who's author of The World Was Our Stage. And we talked about the tragedy of Munich. Let's talk about some other seminal moments that you were there for. The Black Power salute, uh, Mexico City. Um, that was, I, I think history remembers a little bit differently at the time, you know, and how what an impact it had on the games, the impact and the reception they got back home. Talk about that. It was shocking. And it came out of nowhere to us in the truck. And here are these guys who raised that fist. And uh, it was extremely controversial. It was not looked on with favor by the Olympic Committee yep. and the people. They, they didn't. Uh, they threw them out of the I, village, I'm trying right? to remember it so long ago. They, they banned the guys and they, yeah. But but again, I'm proud of ABC. We had uh, uh, one of the fellows came in and was interviewed. We brought him in to find out what he was talking about to try to mm -hmm. find. Again, Arledge, it's a news story now. Yeah. It's a news story above and beyond, bigger than the games. This is something about humanity. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was a hugely controversial, th controversial thing. And. Uh, we, we were really in shock, you know, that's, it's those kind of anecdotes um, uh, that I, t I don't refer to that particular thing, but uh, my, my book is filled with, with, with it's really a, a series of, yeah. of short well, stories well, against, against the, the, the changing times. Andrew, do you remember where you were when uh, um, Al Michaels famously uh, told us that and asked us if we believe in miracles? In my house in Rockville, Maryland, yeah. It's I remember exactly where I yeah. was. People who couldn't name, you know, 10 professional hockey teams could still tell you three or four guys. They could name Mike Garuzioni. Yeah, exactly. yeah, there's exactly. so many of those moments. There's, you know, there's Bruce Jenner in 76, yeah, I was gonna or say Mark Bruce. Spitz, or Nadia yeah. Comaneci, yeah. or Carl Lewis in the 84. Absolutely. Or, yeah. I mean, you, there are moments like that from every you single Olympics. You help the ratings a lot. <laughs> I'm, 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 just, I'm just wondering, what are the moments that, that mean the most to you as you look back from a sporting standpoint? Oh, well, yes. The, the, there are, there are uh, I, I got it deeply immersed in figure skating coverage. So there are a couple of moments there. Brian Boitano's incredible yeah. win in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in Calgary where he, you know, he proved to be the great champion. Because she got a haircut he, after Dorothy Hamill. Got, I <laughs> have I, I, I covered Dorothy Hamill. Sort of Don? Yeah. These people, I've been so blessed. These people have become very good friends, very close friends. And, and, uh, uh, but there's also in the summer games, you talked about Jenner. Uh, also, Nadia uh, Nadia stands out oh. mostly because again, I was I was versed in in the gymnastics world, yeah. and um, to see her. But you know, she's one of the great athletes of all. In in my book, she's one of the three greatest that I put in there. Two of the greatest said they were the greatest: Ali and <laughs> Knievel. <laughs> but she was very shy. But not because she got a perfect ten and made history. Dick Button used to say, because a kid can play the minute waltz in a minute doesn't mean they're a great pianist, you know. But it's what happened to her after that. She yeah. bottomed out. The government mm. walked away from her. She went home and started eating ice cream and being a teenager. And then two years later, without enough time to, to get ready, they asked her to compete in the World Championships. And she was, it was embarrassing in Strasbourg and she fell off the uneven bars where she got in the perfect 10 and they didn't even have a, they couldn't even put up a 10. They didn't even have a 10 to put up in the games. They had to put 1.0 and she mentioned to me later, she didn't know what to think. <laughs> <laughs> she did, you know. And then, but then a year after that, she showed up at a second level competition uh, called the World Cup in, in, and she was a champion of champions. All the great ones were there and she won every event and was beyond, and she, she showed up as the greatest honed, greatest trained athlete that I think I've ever, ever seen. She was so ready, and she was just jaw drop amazing. Yeah. Do you feel differently about figure skating now than when you covered it? Because it, it seems like it's got, we, we have about a minute left. Do you so have yeah, a minute, yeah, I thought you might have a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, it seems like it's less pure or romantic than it was back, I mean, the, the, the Harding and Hannah and, and Kerrigan and, and ever since then, it's. I'll try in a minute. Uh, yeah, uh, th I think Love that it. I think that that the the scandal this, that took place, uh, the Harding Kerrigan thing took place. That's when it lost its innocence. Um, then then there were other, but those were th those were passing things. What happened then was the rules changed. 
Yeah. And when they changed the rules, the sport changed. And now there's sort of a frenetic quality to and women's so much skate. With They're the trying to build else. points, and they've negated the artistry. Yeah. The artistry is what connects well, to the viewer, and so you know, there, uh, there, the ratings are down. You know, uh, he's been very kind here to pull back the curtain a little bit, but I'll tell you from people in the industry, one of the things, there's few gigs that people really want, but to work on the Olympics and outposts from around the world, that's a great gig. And to ride <laughs> shotgun uh, to one of the best of the best here, Jim McKay here, uh, you've lived a very privileged life. Now, speaking of a full life, Andrew, you don't just have to be a Med fan uh, to recognize the passing of Ralph Kiner at 91. Uh, this was a guy... Um, who had a starlet on his arms here, uh, the players eaten out of his hands, and a bust in Cooperstown. Well, I mean, it's amazing because most Mets fans today think of him as just the guy who did the play-by-play -play, um, the Mets games. But you mentioned he was a power hitter for the Pirates in the 1950s, maybe the best power hitter in the game. He dated Elizabeth Taylor and Vivian Lee. I mean, he had the, the start that's with him, him with Elizabeth Taylor. And then, of course, he went on to the Mets broadcast, original Met, interviewing Willie Mays there. And then... What everybody remembers him maybe best for, Kiner's Corner. Everybody, I'm Ralph Kiner, and we have as our special guest Tom Seaver. And it was a fitting day for two great pitchers, and Tom Seaver, of course, started the ball game for the Mets. That's By the way, Doug's jacket would have fit in great right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's from 1984, but it just, it's like the quintessential 70s and early 80s post game show was Ralph Kiner and, and, uh, and Kiner's Corner. It's just. And he'd hand every guy who came on, whoever got it, a hundred bucks, yep. and uh, nobody was too proud to take it. They, they all loved it. And uh, you hear the guy and his stories, and I mean, that was a life well lived. He got a lot in there uh, in 91 years. Wow. Okay, we'll wrap things up when we come back. Stay with us.